Put it down a smidge because it's feeding back to me. Yeah, just a little bit. No, no, just a small bit should be fine. It's when it's loud, it kind of comes back um, and then I kind of go up oh, and I stop and I start again. Uh, perfect now, perfect. And you can still hear me okay. Brilliant, okay. So take a moment to get yourself into the zone. Sit, to be present, to be aware of your body. I don't know if you can see, but just excuse the lines drawn on my body. I was recording some videos earlier for my lymphedema course, mapping out parts of the body. <laughs> yeah. Yes, it's my abs too. Um, I, I drew with eyeliner just to mark out the different sections of the body. So it's still on there. I didn't have a shower yet. All right, so relaxing, tuning into the body and just let yourself settle. So you've just come back from a run. And you want to start slowing everything down. Do that now. Just sitting, being present. Let your shoulders drop. Let the legs relax. Breathing slow down. Sh shoulders I already mentioned. And anywhere else that you notice you might be holding tension. So I noticed when I sat and kind of gave myself permission to let go and relax, I felt all around the hips here and the pelvis relaxed a little bit, almost like I sank a little bit more to the floor. That may happen in the shoulders. If you tend to hold the shoulders up, let them drop. Belly, if you tend to hold everything tight and tense, let it go now. Anywhere else that you find you might hold tension. Also take a moment to be aware of how you're feeling, physically, emotionally, mentally. We need to be aware of that so we can take note of, you know, if we need to rest a little bit more, be gentle with ourselves, drink more water, be a bit more organized for tomorrow so we have the day mapped out and get less frazzled if that helps us being a bit more organized can help sometimes whatever it might be sometimes it's okay I didn't eat so well today so what am I gonna do maybe get something prepared this evening that's ready for tomorrow but take note of how you're feeling and anything that might help help you this evening to sleep better or to be a bit more organized tomorrow or whatever it might be that you Focus then on your breathing and bring your breathing a little bit deeper. So right down to the diaphragm muscle or right down to the belly, breathing in deeply through your nose and out through the mouth. Emptying as you exhale, filling as you inhale. Take a few breaths to let everything slow down. Be conscious of what you're doing. You're moving the diaphragm muscle more. It's stimulating your digestive system, your organs inside your abdomen, your lymphatic system. It's expanding your lungs and your ribs and letting them relax again. Expansion and contraction, if you like, or expansion and relaxation. And it's also nurturing and nourishing your nervous system, all that extra oxygen you get in when you breathe deeply. <sighs> Nourishes your nerves and that helps us to stay calm. We have two nervous systems, you probably know this already, the parasympathetic and the sympathetic nervous system. I always get the two mixed up, but one <laughs> One is responsible for us being up, energized, fight or flight, if you like, and the other is responsible for calming us down. And they work in balance with one another. So we've got to stimulate the relaxing one, I believe is the parasympathetic, in order to kind of dampen down the sympathetic nervous system. And forgive me if I've got the two mixed up 
we actually need to stimulate the relaxing one in order to kind of switch off the one that keeps us in fast mode. And we do that by breathing nice and slow. Let's begin our warm-up stretches. So be sure that you're sitting with your back in an upright position, straight or neutral. And we'll start with the neck. Let's spend a little bit of extra time on the neck and shoulders since you want to stretch them out. Chin to chest, keep breathing and just let your head rest forward or fall forward. And the weight of your head will gently stretch out the back of your neck. Notice what you feel, if you feel more tightness on the right side than the left, for example. Or does it feel even? Do you feel the tension moving into your shoulders, your arms? What's happening? Breathing all the while. And then we look up. Chin up, head back. Only as far as feels comfortable. Breathe. If you've got a lot of tension there might feel a little restricted your movement but just wait kind of hang out there and as your neck relaxes a little bit you'll be able to go a little bit further back keep the jaw closed so you feel the stretch along the throat and repeat chin to chest exhale as you bring your head forward and this time move the head a little bit from side to side back and forth a little, stretching at different angles. Nice and slowly so that you're not engaging the muscles too much. You wanna let the head roll from side to side and stretch out the muscles. Again, being aware of what you can feel and where. And then chin to ceiling again. Keep breathing. Each time you exhale, imagine that you're letting out any stress or tension. Breathe it out. Out of the muscles, out of the body, out of the mind, out of our energy field. Let it all go. Back to center. And then ear to shoulder. Breathe. Hold it there. Find the sweet spot, so if you want to kind of move and change the angle a little bit, do until you find the sweet spot, then hold it. Back to center, inhale, and exhale over the other side. a little bit of crunching there in my neck watch out for anything like that did extra session of rowing this week so feeling a little tense around the neck and shoulders but not too bad inhale back to center exhale over the other side and this time feel free to move around a bit if you like to find the sweet spot or just to get in there at different angles easing out any tension Deep breaths. If you find a spot that feels particularly good, hold it there, breathe. And then back to center, inhale, and over to the other side. Again, moving around a little bit if you like. Relax. Breathe out any tension. what you feel and where. If you find the sweet spot, hold it there and breathe. Inhale back to center. And now we're going to make almost circles. So let's start with the chin to the chest. Roll all the way round. And just before you get all the way to the back, come round again to the front. Why do we do that? Just to avoid that crunch point right at the back. Before we hit that spot, we go back round. And repeat a few times. And back 
back to center and shake it out. Okay, this time we're gonna turn and look over the shoulder, turning the vertebrae in the neck, turning the neck. Inhale into the center, exhale over the other way. Inhale into center, exhale. And repeat that a few times. Back to center when you're ready, relax, roll your shoulders, three circles in each direction. Nice deep breathing, round the other way. Fingertips on the shoulders, make circles with the elbows. And the other way. And shake it out. Okay, we're gonna make lots of movements now for the shoulders and the upper body. Start by rocking from side to side or rock the boat all the way from the hip up along the side and into the arm. So keep this arm elongated and repeat several times. into the center then inhale up exhale forward a little bit go all the way down to the floor if it's comfortable to do so bring your feet into diamond position if you want as well depending on your body I know you're quite flexible in around the hips and that so if you want to sit in diamond position and bring the body right down you can do And then moving a little from side to side, maybe walking the hands around in a semicircle, stretching out in different angles. We want to feel it in the upper back and in the shoulders, so really stretch the arm as well. Back to center and gently up. Inhale up with the arms and just bring the arms down this time and back as far as they'll go. Inhale up, exhale down, and back behind us. Interlace your fingers, stretch the arms. Be careful that you don't lift your shoulders up high towards your ears, and lift your hands up as high as you can behind you to feel the stretch. As high as you can or as high as you need to. I can feel that right in at the breastbone. The technical name escapes me right now. That's the one. <laughs> Thank you. Slowly release and shake it out. Making X's, small X, big X, small X, big X. Breathe. Okay, on the next one, one hand up, one down. Bring the hands together behind your back if you can. Keep this elbow back so you're not pushing against your head or your neck. Breathe and hold. Depending on where you have tension, you'll feel it in different places. Maybe in your tricep, maybe in the ligaments around the shoulder. It really depends. If it's possible and it feels good, a little bit of a roll with the shoulders, a small bit, not too much. On this side, it's not so comfortable for me because the ligaments and all that stuff around this shoulder are tighter and I don't want to force them. Slowly release when you feel ready and shake it out. Opposite hand in the air, bring the hands together behind your back. And this side is much easier for me, much more fluid, keep the elbow back. And this time I'm gonna roll ever so slightly with the shoulders. It makes it much more intense, so just be careful. If your body doesn't like it, don't do it. Never force it. Breathe. 
breathe. Go a little further if you can. Slowly release. Okay, roll the wrists. Round the other way. Open and close and shake it out. We're going to stretch all into the hand, the wrist and the forearm. So either in the air and pull or using the mat if you prefer. Pushing the hand right down. I like to do it this way. Fingers all open wide. Press right down. Be mindful not to hyperextend your elbow like this. And then gently rock it back and forth. Depending on how much tension you have, you'll get more movement or less movement. Careful not to bring the shoulder up towards the ear. Breathe out any of the tension there. If you use your hands a lot, they're going to be tight. Using the phone, typing a lot, whatever it might be. Give them a good stretch, get all that tension out. Wrist up to stretch the fingers that little bit more and the palm. And then over onto the other side, gently, not too much force. And release, that feels lovely. And over to the other side, exactly the same on the other side. Fingers all open wide, press down. Be careful not to hyperextend your elbow. And move back and forth or rock right in there and stretch where it's needed. I was watching um, a video, a, tut a yoga tutorial on Instagram the other day. And the two, there was a guy and a girl demonstrating together and both of them hyperextending their joints all over the place, teaching people how to do, this is how you get into this very extreme pose. You start with this and then this and then this and then this. And even in the first step, their joints were completely hyperextended. I thought, first of all, it's, it's not healthy, you know? Um, I don't know, maybe they're not aware of it, but it, it's, it means two things. One, you're teaching people to push their body into a position where they're hyperextending, which is not great. We should actually be watching out that we avoid doing that. And two, probably people who don't naturally hyperextend their joints are not gonna be able to put their body in that kind of position. But anyway, <laughs> I always watch these things and I'm rolling my eyes, shouting at the screen. No! <laughs> so wrist up, stretch right into the fingers and the hand. And then over onto the other side and stretch gently. It's nice, isn't it? I love it love that one and shake it out. The amount of tension I get in my hands from rowing and whatever else and always with the phone in my hand, which is a bad habit, then on the laptop typing. So it's really nice to stretch all that out. Okay. Ah, okay. Yeah. So you'll get tent. I can imagine. That'll do it all right. Um, so relax again with the shoulders and then we're gonna bring one arm across, hook and pull. Being careful that your shoulders stay level, that we're not doing something like this. Breathe. Again, depending on how much tension you have, you'll feel it more or less, you'll feel it at different places. Maybe you wanna hook below the elbow and that kind of pulls a little bit more in this direction. Maybe that feels better around the shoulder blade. Maybe here you're going to feel it a bit more uh, into the top of the bicep and the, the ligaments around the rotator cuff there, but it just depends what's going on. Relax whenever you feel ready. Get a good stretch, then shake it out and over to the other side. So always relax your shoulders first so we don't have that tendency to, to do something like this. Breathe. Hold, adjust a little bit if necessary. Notice where you feel it and let all that tension out. So 
So today, really focus on the breathing and the exhale, let that tension out. Noticing where you feel the tension and then breathing to relax and let it go. Relax, shake it out. Interlace your fingers, round your back a little bit and pull the hands forward. Looking down slightly, but be careful not to bring your neck into it too much. So we don't want to be looking in towards the belly, for example, because we don't want to strain the neck. We want it in a fairly neutral position. Move the position of your hands, if you like, to figure out where they need to be to feel the best stretch, or maybe you want to cover a few different areas or angles. Just be careful that you don't look, lift, look, lift the shoulders up towards your ears. Breathe. Slowly release. I have an itch. Sometimes I notice, and you might notice the same thing, when you start to really stretch a muscle, it's like the blood supply starts to flow again, if it's been really tight, and it can make you feel itchy. Do you ever get that? It's usually a good sign of a good stretch in most cases. Okay, so sitting up nice and tall next, we're gonna turn, be sure that you're in an upright position before you turn. Use the hands to push and pull and take a few breaths there. And then back round the other way. And repeat that a few times on each side. Using your hands to push and pull a little bit. More if you feel that it's beneficial, less if you want to take it a bit easier. the rain and then helicopter side to side okay it's a good time to grab some water if you need it and then let's move on so I'm going to take the feet out in front and move into diamond position or diamond pose and depending what's happening in your body, you might bring the feet closer to you to go a bit deeper into it or a little bit further away if you're quite stiff. Just be sure that you're sitting up nice and tall. What we want to avoid is the slouching over. And it'll really depend on how much tension you have there. I feel it right here, quite tense. So big deep breaths to breathe. I know you often find that this doesn't give you a huge amount of stretch. So what you can do is either bring the feet really close and then bring your torso down to lie on top of your feet, or even stretch the feet wide into a V and bring your body down the center. So adapt to make sure that you feel the stretch that you need. Okay, that'll do it, yeah. So I'm moving from side to side to just kind of hold a deeper stretch. It might not look very deep. For me, this feels quite deep because I have a lot of tension here. Um, but the gentle swaying helps me to kind of hold it there. And also go a little bit deeper on the right side, then a little bit deeper on the left without any of that bouncing that you often see. We don't want the bouncing. Nice deep breaths, focusing on breathing out any of the tension and stress. And slowly release. Okay, turning sideways now so I can stretch my feet out. We're gonna go into seated spinal twists. So be sure that your back is in neutral, starting nice and straight-ish. Bending my right knee, and I'm gonna turn or move the cross my right foot over the left leg. So my knee is here, my foot's a little bit higher than there, and up nice and tall, turn away from the foot, and I'm pulling 
my knee towards me a little bit. Then I feel the stretch more in the glute. Hand down, sweep around in a semicircle and twist. Look right over your shoulder, things to watch out for. Don't lose the stretch in the glute. Keep pulling that knee almost across to the left side. Gently, of course, we don't want to build up loads of tension in the upper body. Keep yourself sitting upright so that we don't lose the straight neutral back. And then using your fingers behind you to crawl around that little bit more to twist the torso more, depending on how far you want to go. Try to keep your body relaxed as much as possible so we're not tightening the muscles, engaging too many muscles. And mind that your shoulder doesn't come up towards your ear. Hold for as long as you like. Adjust, come back slightly, go a bit more, play around with it, find the best position and hold for a few breaths, exhaling out any tension when you breathe out. Come round to the front when you're ready and a couple of different things that you can do next. Either just grab this leg and sit up nice and tall, bringing the foot up off the floor a, bit, a little bit, bringing the knee right in towards your chest. That might be enough to give you a good stretch into the glutes. Or maybe going into rock the cradle if you like. Just being careful again that you keep your back straight. And we're bringing this part of the leg in towards the chest. That's optional. If you find that that's uncomfortable or awkward, don't do it. And then two feet out in front and into a little bit of a seated forward bend here. If you want to grab something to use as a prop to put around your feet and help you, you can do. Otherwise, we're going to flow a few times. So we're going to inhale up with the arms, lengthening your spine as much as you can, then exhale forward. Keep your back straight and then wriggling the toes as well. So flexing and extending your feet and play around with it to get whatever stretch you need today. If you feel in the ankles after your run, maybe the calf muscles, the hamstrings, the quads, etc. So adapt to suit yourself. Go that bit deeper if you like. Try to keep your back in neutral. Shoulders back a little. Holding onto the feet if you want. Knees bent a little bit if you want to take the calves out of it so you can go a bit deeper into here. Or straighten fully. Toes towards your face to stretch the calves even more. So adapt it to suit yourself. Then flow up again. Inhale up nice and tall as if you're nearly lifting yourself up away out of your pelvis forward and stretch and hold on to the toes if you like bringing the toes towards your face is going to stretch your calf muscles more and then i'm kind of walking on the spot a little bit bending one knee then the other but whatever movement works for you Oof, the calves are very tight Then allow yourself to fold right over or bend right over. You'll feel it probably more in your mid to upper back when you do that. That's okay. Roll up, flow up one more time towards the sky and one more seated forward bend, depending on which way you want to go or which adjustments you want to make for yourself. breathe. Take as much time as you like, exhaling out all of the tension that you might be feeling in those muscles. The tighter it feels, the bigger the deep breath, <sighs> let out that tension. Okay, now we're going to go to the other side with our seated spinal twist. So I bend my left knee this time, cross over the other side, my knee is here, my foot is up here, sitting up tall. So watch what happens with my pelvis and my lower back when I do that. 
I'm rounded a little bit here. When I sit really tall, this kind of pulls forward. And that's when I get a better stretch here. So that's what I'm talking about when I'm talking about sitting up nice and tall. Pull this in to feel the stretch more around the glutes here. Hand down, sweep it round in a semicircle and twist. And hold. Breathe. So I want to hold on here, but without kind of tightening everything up in the upper body. You can, of course, also put the arm across, even across and bend the elbow, but I like to hold it this way. Mind your shoulder that you don't bring it up towards your ear. Twist as much as you can or as much as you need to and want to. Breathe. Exhaling out any of the tension in those muscles. <laughs> I see getting lots of doggy kisses there. So cute. <laughs> nice and salty. Uh huh. Super cute. Okay, come back round to the front when you're ready. Grab that knee, pull it right in, sitting up nice and tall again. Or go into rock the cradle if you prefer like so. You can put, technically we want to go around the outside actually, but I often start, I often start by hooking underneath to bring the, the leg closer to the chest. Then I try to sit the sole of my foot into just below where the crease of the elbow is, above in fact, so I'm not twisting my ankle and moving it in a funny direction. Then take that arm out and go around the outside. I'll show you from another angle. So I often start by kind of hooking here and then I'm bringing it closer to me. The foot, I just want to be careful that I'm not kind of bending it in weird directions for my ankle. So I like to press it right in there just above the, the crease of the elbow. And then I take that arm out and we can rock a little bit. That's why it's called rock the cradle but we want to be careful that we're sitting up tall and then we bring that side of the leg towards the chest. But you can hold it this way if it's, if it's more comfortable. If you end up doing something funny with your upper body to try and get into that position, adapt. All right, so that just gives you a deeper stretch around here. Pause when you're ready, have another stretch into seated forward bend if you like. Drink some water if you need it. And then we're going to go a little bit slower. Take your time. So some more forward bends. And adapt between rounded back, which we often feel like, oh, look, I can go much closer towards my knees. I'm doing a really nice forward bend there, but I'm bending from here. We want to watch what's going on around here. But you can alternate between loose like a rag doll and straight back. Get the stretch that you need. Lots of exhaling to let out all that tension in the legs from your run. And then when you're ready, we'll move on. So. To help you to relax and really slow everything down, we're going to do a little bit of feet in the air. Do you like uh, the inverted effect and the plough? No pressure. We'll do those if you like them. If not, I'm going to... What's that? That's fine. So we inverted effect. We basically go upside down. Let me just take that clip out of my hair. And we're inverted like so. Yeah, and then the plow, we bring the feet right down towards the floor. So we're gonna take our time and go nice and gentle, or gently even is the more correct word. So I'm gonna start by putting my feet here up on the sofa. 
and just getting myself into the zone breathing my head's resting on the mat I don't have anything underneath my head that I have to balance on top of my neck is in neutral shoulders are away from the ears back resting into the mat and I let everything relax now take a few breaths when we bring the feet up higher than the heart we give the heart well it's said it's debatable but it's said that we give the heart a little bit of a rest. We help the blood flow to come back down in this direction without the heart having to, to pump it so much. But there's actually a new theory, there's new science, new research um, that debunks that and says that it's not just the heart that pumps the blood around the body, but that the blood vessels actually do have a pumping mechanism as well. So all of the blood vessels, or particularly the larger ones, pump as well, not just your heart, apparently. So that's interesting. But anyway, the point being, when we're upside down or when we have the feet up higher than the heart, it can alleviate that hard work that your heart has to do to pump the blood around. And it's actually said to be one of the best things that you can do for yourself before bedtime to calm yourself is being upside down and it can be as simple as feet up on the sofa feet up on the wall whatever it might be flexing and extending the feet or and we're going to do it now up into inverted effects doesn't really matter we're upside down that's the the part that counts it can be as relaxed as just sitting with your bum close to the wall and the feet up the wall or more active going up into your inverted effect. So the important thing to remember when you go up into the inverted effect is that we want to make a tripod with the four, the upper arms, the elbows and the hands in at the back of the pelvis. Be careful that you don't have your elbows open really wide out far from the side of your body and then the temptation is to catch yourself in your thumbs as well. We don't want to do that. It's much more stable if we have the elbows tucked in so they're alongside my body or they would be if my body was on the mat and imagine that your thumbs are glued to the side of your hand so you can't use them separately. We put the whole palm of the hand or heel of the hand in underneath the hips or the back of the pelvis and that's much more stable. We don't need to strain any other part of the body to hold us there. My headphones are slipping off my head now. So we basically hold ourselves here. We want the legs at a 45 degree angle, ideally. If they're up quite high, our center of gravity is pushing more into our wrists. And if they're down lower, well, we're going in the other direction. For now, we're not going there just yet. 45 degree angle, flex and extend the feet, making your muscles contract and relax, which has a positive impact on your lymphatic system. Don't forget to breathe, <sighs> wriggle all the toes, and if you want, stretch the legs, open the feet out wide, then bring them back together, one foot up high, the other one down low, swap over. <sighs> so just getting the body nice and slowly used to being upside down. Of course, be careful if you've eaten something recently, hopefully not. But if you have, you're now upside down. And that's not ideal when you're digesting food. But always a good idea to leave at least an hour and a half to digest your food before doing your yoga anyway. In an ideal world. In your own time then, when you feel ready, you can start to move a little bit further into it. So first thing that I like to do is get my neck in a nice comfortable position. To do that, I bend my knees, bringing my center of gravity much lower, closer to the floor so I feel more stable. And then I kind of push my bum up a little bit higher so I'm making my back more perpendicular to the floor. When I do that, I push higher up onto my shoulders and my neck and I give a little bit of a wriggle to get right up there onto the top of the shoulders and the neck. And make sure that I'm comfy there. So we still want to have the whole hand in behind your back for a little bit of support. And then I like to rock back and forth a little bit, testing out what's happening in my neck. 
Does it feel comfortable? Back as well. Rocking back and forth a little bit, breathing. And in your own time then, stretching out the legs to bring the toes down towards the floor. And sometimes, particularly if the legs are tight, that's just going to feel a little bit much. So I don't hold it for too long. I come back up a little bit. And again, I'm kind of going back and forth, getting the body used to it, breathing out the tension, making sure that there's not anywhere that's painful. And after a few attempts, so on that last attempt, wow, I felt that really right down at my coccyx. So that's how much it's lengthening the whole back of the body. If you feel comfortable, go all the way over and then bring your hands over and take your toes in your hands. Open out wide. Oop. Careful not to knock over your water. Come back in and play around with the movements like so. I'm going to bring my feet back up so I can talk again. When you're all the way over in plow, of course, you're going to put a bit more pressure on your thyroid, on your voice box. Um, on your chest as well so if it feels weird or a bit restricted with your breathing just bring the feet back up again to open everything out again but play around with the movement going back and forth keep breathing notice where you can feel the stretch and get all the stretch that you need take your time we're taking it nice and slow today the aim of the game to slow you down ready for bed so take it slow, stretch out all the tension out of your body. There's no rush, release the tension, breathe. How nice is your body going to feel after this big deep stretch? And lots of breathing to get you into the zone for resting. And of course, then being upside down, keeping the feet up in the air again is very relaxing for the body too, provided that you're not feeling stressed about it, of course. It's all well and good to say this is brilliant for relaxing you. If it's something that you don't feel comfortable with personally, you're not gonna feel more relaxed. So keep going. I'm gonna come out of it and just have a quick look at the screen, but take your time. That's it. Just be careful that you continue breathing. It's very common when we bring ourselves into that plow position. A lot of people hold their breath. But be very careful that you keep on breathing. And get all the stretch that you need. So the benefit of doing this plow is that you get a deep stretch all the way from the neck into the back, into the glutes and all the way along the legs. You really do stretch out the entire back of the body. Okay, so after that, knees into chest and rock a little bit. Notice how much stretchier you feel after that. Where do you feel it? I feel like my neck really released a lot of tension there. It's an excellent deep stretch for the neck. However, if you have a lot of tension in your neck, you've got to be super careful to go slowly that you don't go further than your neck is able for. Yeah. That's okay too, because you were running today, right? So you're going to feel it more in your legs anyway. That's where you'll feel it first. So that's where you can play around with bending the knees a little. What you can actually do is bend your knees and bring them towards your ears. And you make yourself, how do I describe it? You make yourself into the shape of almost like an anchor, <laughs> if that makes sense. 
um, and that's a good way to change where you're focusing the stretch as well. And then there is walking your feet a little bit further back away from you. So you roll even further, you get your back more perpendicular to the floor, your bum higher, etc. Little tweaks like that, but do be careful. But yeah, you can bring your ears, bend your knees and bring your ear, your knees towards your ears and let your lower legs rest on the floor and arms out behind you and you make the shape of an anchor almost. So you can adjust it to, to get into where you need it, but not surprised that you feel it more in the legs if you were running today. So uh, rocking back and forth, massaging your back into the mat, then change the angle. Hands on top of the knees, making circles maybe, or rocking back and forth over the lower part of the back, wherever you feel you need it. It's more of a massage than anything else. And then into number seven, or a more gentle variation if you prefer. Our number seven being arms out to the side at a 90 degree angle, make the shape of a number seven with your legs here, or a box. If you wanna work your abdomen that bit harder, you're gonna almost pull your belly button down towards the floor as you exhale, push and then super, super slowly down to the floor. If you're not that interested in working harder, which maybe you aren't if you're getting ready for bed, just nice and gently down to one side. Let your feet come down onto the floor. Relax, let go. Keep both shoulders flat on the floor, palms are facing down. Use this hand to hold onto the knee and pull a little bit if you like. Depends on where you have tightness or stretch the legs all the way out as well, if you like. The stretch comes from the twist. So you may need more twist or you may need a little bit less, depending on where your body's at today. Get the stretch that you need, breathe. And since we're, our focus is on relaxing, Stay there a little bit, completely let go. Relax, relax, relax. Exhaling out any tension. <laughs> I have one foot hovering right up above the, the floor. That's where it wants to go, so that's where it's going today. And that's okay. Come back to center whenever you feel ready. Rock a little bit in the center again to make sure you're in the center. And then over to the other side. Arms out at a 90 degree angle. Make the shape of the number seven or a box. Down to the side. Let your feet touch the floor. Relax. Keep both shoulders flat on the floor. If the back shoulder comes up, you're twisting too far, go back a little bit. Let go and relax. If you want a deeper stretch, twist that a little bit more at the hips, either use the hand to pull or maybe stretch your legs all the way out. Whatever way works for you. Breathe, we're focusing on relaxing tonight. So just do your best to let go. Exhale out any tension. Feel your body nice and relaxed into the mat. Take your time and come back to center whenever you're ready. Whoops. Okay, so see how you feel now. Take a couple of minutes just to rest or to move the arms a little bit more or maybe add in some bridges if you feel like being a bit more active. But if you want to just keep on resting, relaxing, maybe feet up on the wall, maybe full length stretch and just focus on your breathing.
if there's anywhere that you feel mm, I need a little bit more movement for that part of the body or a little bit more of a stretch go for it if you want to do any of the deeper stretches if you find that relaxing maybe you could move into pigeon or your diamond again but just rest if that's where you're at either way let your body feel kind of heavy just let go and breathe breathe nice and gently but deeply in through the nose and out through the nose or the mouth Be mindful not to breathe in through your nose. And this will be something to watch out for when you're running as well. Uh, very, very difficult, I think. I find it super difficult to breathe in and out through my nose when I'm hiking or in the gym or anything like that. But we need to be very careful. I don't know if you were here for the other classes where we were talking about this. We need to be super careful not to be breathing in all the time through our mouth mouth breathing is actually really bad for our lungs because we miss out the filtration process of the air going through our nose and our trachea and all that well it still goes through the trachea but we miss the filtration process in the nose and the nasal passage and it can actually be quite damaging for your lungs not an issue if you're all good and healthy but if you are finding that you have any issues with the lungs be really really careful of mouth breathing or not mouth breathing as the case may be If there's any last movements or stretches that you want feel free if you want to drink a little bit of water feel free i'm just going to grab my hoodie and we'll get ready for our relaxation um you can literally feel the change in the air temperature here when the rain starts so i need to add more clothes Any special requests for our meditation? Okay. And can you still hear me okay? Sound is okay? Volume's okay? Perfect. All right. So we're going to focus a lot on breathing and mindfulness, I think. That'll be helpful for relaxing and getting ready for bed. So when you feel ready, Bring yourself into your resting position. Make sure that you're warm and comfortable for at least the next 15 minutes. When you're lying down on the floor, on the mat, check your points of posture. So we want the head resting comfortably on the mat or floor, that it's not kind of balancing on top of a ponytail or anything, so that your neck can be relaxed and in a neutral position. Shoulders away from the ears, so generally lengthening our arms will help us achieve that. Stretch the arms away, back resting into the mat nice and comfortably. Let your hips and your glutes sink into the mat, your legs as well. Let your feet and your ankles relax. And if it's comfortable, the best position to lie in is our corpse position. The feet open a little bit, let the feet flop out to the side and palms open as well with the palms facing upwards if it's comfortable to do so. definitely keep the palms open wherever you end up resting them. We want the energy flowing. So focus on your breathing and be aware of the breath flowing in 
and flowing out. Be aware of what you can feel in your nostrils, for example. In your throat. Feel your ribs moving as your lungs move. And your belly, feel your belly moving as you breathe deeply. Allow yourself to let go a little bit more. Allow yourself to sink into the floor and nice and relaxed and loose. Exhale, let go. Exhale, let go. Be aware of the clothing on your skin if you can, if you can feel it, if you're aware of it. What does it feel like? Does it feel soft? Does it feel comfortable? Can you feel it moving as you breathe? Can you feel the mat or floor, the surface underneath your body? Can you feel your body pressing against it? Breathe and feel yourself sinking right down into the mat, into the floor. Be aware of your head resting against the mat, your back resting against the mat, your legs resting against the mat, and pressing down quite heavily. Oh. I was saying there, being aware of your body sinking into the mat, each part of the body, the head, the back, the legs, and so on. Really being aware of your physical body. And each time you exhale, just allowing yourself to relax that little bit further, feeling your body sinking further into the mat. More and more relaxed with each breath. Keep the focus on your breathing. And what I'd like you to do is to count. I'm gonna start you off, but of course your breathing is gonna settle into its own pattern and I don't want you to try and force yourself to count with me, but just to get you started and so you know what I'm talking about, I'm, I'm gonna count first and then I'm gonna give you a couple of moments of silence to continue. So for example, I'm going to exhale, two, three, four, inhale, three, four, exhale, two, three, four, inhale, 
two, three, four. Exhale, two, three, four. Breathe in whatever rhythm feels natural to you. And if possible, count to four on the way out and four on the way in. not counting the heartbeats. If you're very aware of your heartbeat or your pulse, try not to get that confused with the counting of your breath. We don't need to bring it in rhythm with our heartbeat. You can if that works, but the heart rate might slow down and so your counting will slow down. So don't worry about trying to bring it in line with your heartbeat. Just count. And breathe. Often we can breathe out much longer than on the inward breath. So if it feels uncomfortable counting four on the way in and four on the way out, change it a little bit. That's fine. Maybe one, two, one, two, three, four. Find your rhythm. Keep counting in your mind. And allow yourself to settle into a rhythm that feels natural. Relax your body. Notice if you've started to tense up anywhere. Let that go. Relax. Keep counting. Just like counting sheep, counting as we breathe can be really useful to help us become sleepy if we're having trouble sleeping. It works twofold. First, as you're counting, your mind is occupied. It has a job to do. It's focused. And secondly, you slow your breathing down. And that helps to slow the nervous system, probably breathing more deeply so we get more oxygen in, which can help us to feel sleepy. And we slow our heart rate down as well as we slow the breathing down. So it's a really useful technique to help us fall asleep or to help us relax at bedtime. it helps if we've had a good stretch, if we've released physical tension from the body, if the body is physically feeling that bit more relaxed, then breathing and then counting can really help us to fall asleep. And if your mind is very active and keeps distracting you, that's okay. Don't get frustrated with that. Don't try and force anything. Just acknowledge whatever thoughts are coming to you. If there's anything there coming from your subconscious that's trying to get your attention, acknowledge that, make a note of it, and then let it be. Don't fight it. If your mind is very active and busy, don't fight yourself. Don't give it too much attention either. Acknowledge it, observe, and then carry on breathing. Let the thoughts
Ortsbild. Meditating. And in fact, I would even say all types of energy healing and even our yoga, it's not about control. It's not about controlling our breathing. It's not about controlling our mind. It's not about controlling what thoughts come in and out of our mind. It's about sitting with all of those things and learning how to sit with them in a better way, in a calmer way they demand less of our attention now. That we flow rather than control. Because of course, control is a big illusion. It's about being present, sitting with ourselves, with our energy, with our emotions, sitting and feeling more comfortable as we practice. It's not about controlling all of it. Just let yourself drift if you're feeling relaxed enough. Allow yourself just to drift, to rest, to relax. If you're going to jump straight into bed after this, fantastic. If not, that's also okay. Come back to the breathing technique when you get in, when we do get into bed. Maybe even putting the feet up the wall for a little while to relax. And maybe try to avoid the news or the cell phone. The things that can make us very alert again or emotional or whatever or stressed. Just try and avoid those if you can. Avoid anything that's going to stimulate you too much. Keep yourself in that nice restful state in the zone. some of this when you do get back into the bed or into the bed even and I hope you have a really restful sleep this evening so take as much time as you would like there I'm going to end the session now